What's going on everybody? This is Stubbs here from Retro Handhelds. Today we're going to take a look at the RG405M from Ann Burnick and get some first impressions going. Let's go. All right, so it's been a hot minute. We're anxiously awaiting a lot of devices right now, including the Retroid Pocket Flip, which has the same T618 uh, chipset that's in here. This is running Android 12. This is interesting. So this has a four by three screen joystick up top. This isn't the handheld, that's just the box. Get out of here. I actually already opened this earlier, so this isn't really a true unboxing. Blop. It comes with the usual stuff, you know, micro SD card, 128 gigs, that's really nice. Don't worry about any of that. It also came with this official case. No frills really as far as the design goes, but I like that it has that red Ampernic logo there. Here's something different. This has some foam padding if you want to take a look at that. Yeah, my intern Cheetah Steve really, really likes that. Oh, who's... Not... No, 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 no. Not Cheeto Steve. Cheetah Steve. I'm Cheetah Steve. I have so many handhelds and slippers. Sometimes it makes me cry when things come from the factory. Not perfect. So there's a good like quarter inch of cushioning. And so when you put the handheld in, that's all yeah, oh, it fits nice and snug. And that's really soft and it has extra padding and protection on the bottom. Yeah, I gotta say, I like this case. For myself, I could do without these things. It's just, it takes longer to get the handheld out. And if the case is closed, I don't think it's going anywhere anyways. There is also a gray colorway that has a greenish tint, a greenish hue in the CNC alloy aluminum. Now, Ambernick claims this is the first alloy aluminum CNC Android handheld on the market. This is a very nice feeling device, similar to the 353M, but it's a little bit more comfy. It has rounded edges, which is really nice. It's nice and simple. You have two downfiring speakers. You have a headphone jack on the bottom, one micro SD card slot because this just boots into Android 12. Up top, you got your uh, ventilation. Now there's no active cooling in here, but it's nice to have passive cooling and you get a nice vent. So we get the vent smell, gotta check that out. Yep, definitely smells like a vent. I would say 7.5 out of 10 for that, no problemo. Volume up and down, clicky, I like that. A uh, little recessed power button, which is great so you don't accidentally restart the damn thing or turn it off. We have inline shoulders, which many people might not be pleased with, but these are actually very serviceable. They click and register from all sides of the device. And you have L2 and R2 that are bumped up. This is again, this is like the, I would say, improvement over the 353M. The face buttons, unfortunately, are glossy, which aren't my favorite. They depress really nicely, and these are conductive rubber. You know, no problems here. These are definitely going to be replaced very soon, as soon as we get some mods from one of the modders, swap in different buttons. Maybe they can all say A. I just want just, you know, four red A's. Now, I did build this handheld and, wait a minute, wrong video. I like the joysticks. So these are Hall joysticks, look to be the same from the 353M. You have a D-pad. Now this is a little different than the D-pad I've seen from Embernic. Yes, it has that mushy conductive rubber, but it has this like nice pivot that reminds me of the RP3+. Plus. And I really like that. I have a feeling we might not see some of those diagonal, faulty diagonals, but we'll have to test to be sure. Uh, here you have the home button or the back button. Over here you have start and select. I like that they're really accessible right like that. You have a nice big 4x3 screen here. This is going to look sort of look gorgeous for pretty much all content that is playable on it because you have enough power in the T618. Combine that with the smaller screen resolution of the 4x3 here, less pixels, 640x480, and so that's going to be really nice. You're not having to drive as many pixels like you would on the 3 Plus or the RG505, so you're actually going to get, should get better performance out of this. The one outlier is waiting on the Retro Pocket Flip and seeing what that can do with its 4 gigabytes of RAM. On the back, by the way, it has these usual rubber nips. It has a 4,500 milliamp hour battery now, and Burnett claims this will have up to 12 hours of battery life on lower end gaming, five hours on higher end gaming. So those are pretty high estimates, but in the right software, that could be a target that we could hit. So we're gonna have to test in the full review. If you haven't seen Zoo's first impressions, I recommend that. There's some great size comparisons, uh, classic Zoo humor, but uh, <laughs> we also have some written reviews on the way and a video from a shoot who's gonna do a teardown. I do like the face buttons on this over the Skittle face buttons on the on the other skew. So I appreciate that these are a little bit more subdued, which is nice, but I will end up ultimately probably buying the uh, the other one because green, as you can see, is my new color for 2023. 
Now this does have the Google Play Store. This has all the same apps it looks like from the RG505. Night mode, which is cool. You got your key mapper. You have the Ambernic front end. You have Nintendo Switch mode, which is going to swap that A and B button. You have a turbo, mo turbo mode, which I hope works this time. Airplane, screencast, dark theme. Which, yes, give us the dark theme. Probably eye comfort off just so we get an accurate color representation here. Don't love that there's a bunch of games that get included, but this is par for the course for Ambernic. So you got 3DS. So what can we do with this? So if we launch into the front end, which the internal storage is 128 gigabytes. Nice. Four gigabytes of RAM. So that competes neck and neck there with that Retroid Pocket Flip. Mmm. Yeah, guys, so far this is, I mean, God, this is feeling really comfortable. Like this is more comfortable than the 353M for sure. I like that it's a little bit taller. Yeah, this is just nice. And Burnick's always been great with these metal hand handhelds but I feel like they really perfected it and just made it more efficient and streamlined. Could have probably hidden these screws if we wanted, just to make it even a little bit more cleaner. But I mean, this is gonna be pretty easy to tear down, I feel like. Deck it out with some mods, and man, you got a, you got a handheld stew going once again. Joysticks feel great. Now here's the big, here, here's the big kerfuffle in the drama is that people are saying, well, all right, we got the joystick up top. That's gonna be garbage for any retro games, really what this thing is intended for. I don't know, for me, I got used to it on the 2 Plus, having it up top. It's just a joystick makes me just a little bit easier, at least for my thumbs, than a D-pad. So I prefer having a joystick up top. That's how I ordered my KTR-1. So that's another device we hope to compare this against once we can get some more information on that. But I mean, this is a good combo. Even with the D-pad right there, that's going to be no problem. They're not separated that much. I mean, really, if anything, it's going to feel like playing on maybe a, an Xbox controller. Thickness is nice. So today's video, we're just going to just look at the stock experience, the stock front end. We're not going to customize stuff, but you can play everything on this from Atari up through some Nintendo Switch. So we're going to go ahead and launch that front end, which the quick way to do it is from the pulling down from the top there, and that's going to load it in. I like this new and improved front end. And Burnick had a rough year last year. They had they had some good devices, but uh, a few blunders along the way. They really hit it out of the park, though, with the 35XX, with a device that's at the right price point for the right performance. And the is this going to work just out right out the gate? Well, that's always nice. Having a front end be already set up is really nice. So here we are trying the D-pad out. Fighting games, of course, don't quite feel right on a joystick, do they? Yeah. Come here, lady. Come here. Ah. All right, what else we got? So hold down the home button, takes you back, huh? First startup application configuration needs to be completed. The next step is to load the resource file. When the loading is completed, please manually press the home key to complete the first configuration. Okay, all right, there you go. Okay, home button. Let's do some N64 action. What do we got, what do we got, what do we got? We got some Turo, Turok. Should do some Star Fox, Foxy Foxy. Oh, this is going to load into standalone muppin. Oh, with the... Okay, good. That would have been very upsetting. Uh, speakers sound good in this, by the way. I'm going to put it up to the mic here. The right speaker, left speaker, here, there, combined. Yeah, those are nice and strong. Let's see how loud they get. Wow, nice and loud. Okay. Into a wasteland of near extinction. The voiceover sounds good. I can, <laughs> I can already tell you it's not the same screen. It's, it's too small. Well... Definitely has deeper contrast, deeper blacks. I guess it is a nicer screen. It's a way darker screen. Yeah, these color temperatures are completely different. I mean, look at that. That is a stark difference. I actually have to lower... I'd have to lower the brightness on the 353 to probably about there. So, I mean, I guess it's up to personal taste what you think is better, but they're definitely completely different screens completely different color temperatures. Again, this looks richer and more vibrant. The contrast is nice and deep. I mean, this looks just kind of washed out in comparison, which I never noticed. But I mean, this isn't OLED or anything like that, but it's definitely a nice... I don't know where this screen came from. I'm, this is... I gotta... I need to ask some questions. Let's compare to the 35XX. Yeah, speaking of garlic OS... Definitely the 35XX can get brighter as well, which is the same screen as the 353V, so we have to knock it down a bit to make it comparable. 
So yeah, again, the 35XX screen here looks a little bit washed out in comparison. Definitely uh, got deeper, richer colors. Again, just curious what they used here. Let's launch right into some higher end stuff. Again, I'm not gonna really do too much of a emulation showcase here. We'll wait on that, but realize Play Store will have a little bit of overhead as far as RAM goes, but with four gigs in this bad boy, it's not gonna be an issue. Stubborn Pixel 2023 FPM.me, don't email me. Update all the, th oh God, not Aether, not Aether. Don't update Aether ever. Make sure auto updates off. Unfortunately, the dev behind Duckstation, Aether SX2, Talreth, uh, what's his, what's his face? He, uh, he was having a bad day, and then he up uploaded a bad, a bad update, and it's caused some issues. Borked performance, it's no good. Again, I'm no dead zone master. You know what this screen reminds me of? It reminds me of the Nintendo Switch Lite. I wanna pair it with a controller. So we got our handy dandy new, basically jungle green skew from 8BitDo. It's hard to see, but we are getting full speed here. Again, we generally know how this chip performs. There are so many videos out, including plenty on our channel. If you wanna see more how the T618 performs, you're gonna see it in our X18S videos and our Retroid Pocket 3 Plus videos, uh, Ambernic RG505. This is getting warmer now, so it's getting warmer on the right side. Not hot, but warm. We're at 1x negative, native. so let's try a 2x, see how we fare. Are we still hitting full? Yep. Yep, we're still doing, we're still doing okay. We don't, I mean, 3x is going to be ridiculous, but 2.5. Still getting full speed. Three times native. Now we're gonna get some frame drops. Still running full speed. So let's blow up the processor and try 4X. There we go, there's our drops. There is our drops. Yeah, I would just leave this at 2X, but depending on the game, I mean, you're just wasting CPU cycles at that point. Yeah, this looks gorgeous. Look at that. All right, let's pair it with the controller. So let's turn on Bluetooth, and we're gonna do the same on the Epito. Let's try Neo Contra. Oh no, the controls on the Epito are swapped. Let's see what they did with 3DS. I doubt this is gonna work right off the bat. Again, no need for any of the on-screen stuff. That would have been nice to be configured off, but... Bakers can't be choosers, I suppose. Just kidding. Uh, handheld people, us, the, the crew, you're watching this, we are the most OCD demanding people in the world. The world. This is running, this is running really well. All right, so there's some optimization going on. I don't think we're just brute forcing it with the CPU. What's going on with Wii? Let's do something easy. Ridge Racer. Something easy to play, that is. I hope. Oh, first time setup. Allow. I guess we'll call this video a, like a quick review. Look at this, Wii works right out the gate. Controls already mapped. So, all right, all right. I see you, Ambernic, I see you. You're, you're, you're setting stuff up. The basics work. That's really nice. This even appears to be going near full speed, over full speed. This is a very comfortable handheld. All right, wrapping up, what do we think? This showed up way faster than I thought it would. Uh, I imagine it's going on sale within the next few days. As far as pricing goes, all I know so far is that it will be less than 170 for the first 48 hours. So go ahead and follow the link in our description. This could be your one and done for many people. This is definitely fulfilling the KTR1 dream in a way. Having an option of that joystick up top, it definitely reminds me of that device. But yeah, I want to get the face buttons modded. I want to probably buy this in the other color. I would love to see that green, green, gray, 
and I want to test the battery life out more, see how far we can get. Again, in this play session here, we're still at 84%. That is nuts with Wi-Fi on. Yeah, I think this will be a great device to play in bed, especially because it's a little bit darker. I'm not sure how much success you're going to have playing this out in the sun. For me, it's going to come down to probably this one or the Retroid Pocket Flip, which has a matching four gigabytes of RAM. Uh, of course, that is going to be a little bit widescreen, so I imagine this will be outperform it in performance a bit just because it doesn't push as many pixels. But these are my first thoughts, my quick review. Thank you all so much for watching. Please do like, comment, and subscribe, and there will be more on the way. We have our weekly news coming up here. And just remember to take care of your handhelds, everybody, and take care of each other. And somebody take care of Zoo.